What's up guys, Everything Apple Pro here and iOS 10 is here. A lot of people are going to be faced with the question, should you update or not? Is it worth it? What's new? What's different? Is it faster? With this video, I want to answer all of those questions in a little review of iOS 10, Apple's latest operating system. To begin with, the lock screen receives a huge overhaul. So not only do you unlock it differently, now there's no more slide to unlock, you can raise to wake. There's just a completely reimagined lock screen in iOS 10. With iOS 10, Apple has placed a lot more information within your reach on the lock screen. If you slide over, you can now access the widgets view. No longer do you need to go to the notification center to see this. This is available on the lock screen and on your home screen. So here you can see all of your widgets, which of course you can customize, and they're all overhauled for iOS 10. So definitely a great upgrade for the lock screen. And Control Center. Control Center has received a very handsome upgrade and a lot of new functionality as well. So you'll now get three pages. One for your basic controls, the second for music controls, and the third you'll only see if you have HomeKit devices. Here you can go ahead and control all of those without needing to go into a separate app really cool. And 3D touch is now supported in control center. So on some controls, you can 3D touch on them and get more fine precision. So in this case, on the main page, if I 3D touch on the flashlight icon, it gives me separate controls for varying brightness, really cool. And the entire bottom row does support 3D touch. So otherwise you have your regular controls that have just received a facelift and the now playing page is a very handsome update. Looks good. You have your album art in there and can control all of your music from it. So great upgrade to control center. And this is a very big one. The animations have changed in iOS 10. When you slide up on control center, you no longer get the bounce that you do in the notification center. Apple has rethought these very small things when launching applications. The animation is different. If you actually close the application before opening it, it will do that. It feels fast because of that. The folders have a different animation. You'll find animation differences everywhere in the springboard, which make it feel brand new. Unfortunately, if you don't have a success, you're not getting the full iOS 10 experience. Apple unfairly treats the success with royalty here, as all of the exclusive features are for it. The race to wake, you can clear all notifications with 3D touch, something that could have easily been accomplished with a little software tweak for other devices hasn't. You're getting new toggles everywhere from the control center at first to individual app icons. You're going to see a massive expansion into 3D touch being a useful, necessary thing in day to day life. While that's great for success owners, unfortunately, Apple left everybody else outside of the loop. So I don't like that. But if you own a success, enjoy, you're going to get a ton of new widgets for all these applications. It's just become something more necessary instead of a gimmick. Even when deleting text, if you 3D touch on the backspace button, you're going to do it quicker. These little tiny things, they're there in iOS 10 that make 3D touch worth it. I mean, if you're looking at your music library, go ahead and 3D touch on it, get more information instead of needing to go in and then click on the more info tab. Even folders got expanded support for 3D touch. You can now rename them. And if you have any applications with notifications in a folder, 3D touch on it, and you're going to get the priority ones first. iOS 10 received a huge overhaul in the sound department. So just listen. And one could argue that the focus on emojis in iOS 10 is unnecessarily big. There is a huge change in the look of all emojis. So they've received more depth. They look a little bit more 3D like more shadow to them and a bunch of new emojis. So focus on removing dangerous objects like a real gun and replacing them with a water pistol, new family oriented emojis and a bunch of sports related ones as well, mostly with women inside of them. So taking a closer look at which emojis are actually different, there's this chart which will show you the different look of all of the emojis. And then there are new ones as well. So the new ones, as you can see right here, a lot of sport oriented ones, some new males as well, and just one new emoticon. But that wasn't enough love for emojis. So Apple made them three times bigger in iMessage when typing up to three at one time and included a new feature that would replace all words with emojis that matched up with a certain type of emoji. So for example, you can click on it and then click on a relevant emoji and just replace the word with an emoji. So the next area Apple put a lot of effort into is iMessage. They wanted to make it more fun, easier to use, more like social media, I guess. You can now draw and send animated drawings to your friends directly from within the app using a built-in feature. There's an image selector where you can go ahead and find funny images just by search or GIFs or GIFs. 
send handwritten messages just by rotating your phone and then writing them like this. And it's pretty cool because depending on the type of message you're sending now, you're going to get a different read received. So you're going to know what's coming depending on the type of content the person is sending. I thought that was a really neat touch. And there's a built-in app store in messages completely separate of the regular app store where you can find individual stickers, new keyboards, new image pickers. There's so much here. I thought it was a really neat touch. So you can add those onto photos and the predictive text is now more contextually aware. For example, if someone asks you, where are you? It'll go ahead and give you an option to send the current location right there. You'll also get a new image picker from in here. Just take a photo and drag it up when you're ready to send. Quick reply is smarter now as well. So instead of just sending one message, if you choose to quick reply to someone, you can go ahead and hold an entire conversation in the thread right here with scrolling. So it's like a light version of messages without needing to open it up. There's a bunch of new effects you can send with your messages. So if you want to send a loud effect, a slam effect, you can do that. There's even a cool neat one called invisible ink. So when someone gets a message, you can slide it away and reveal the text, even send backgrounds with your messages if you want to for different occasions. There's a happy birthday one, a laser one, pretty cool. Photos has received a huge overhaul. It's now much smarter. So it does have facial recognition and scene recognition. So now you can ask Siri, hey Siri, bring up that time with the cows and it'll bring up all photos with a cow or with a certain person. You get the idea. Photos is much, much smarter. And there's also a new button in photos on the bottom left. It's called memories. So what memories is for is it'll assemble certain events, certain times into one chunk and give you a photo and pre-make a video with music for you to go ahead and give you a nice presentation of that certain time period, that album, whatever it was all into one. So this one, for example, is for the last three months and it does add music and you can go ahead and watch it. A very welcome update to maps. It's now much friendlier, cleaner, more bubbly, and it has more dark mode elements implemented into it. It's also a lot easier to use and navigate. All of the controls are on the bottom of the maps, so you can use it with one hand, which you shouldn't while driving, but certainly gets easier. You can also see the weather of certain areas you zoom into. There's more information for points of interest, easier to find those. I thought it was a really nice update. Favorite thing about it is that it starts to pan and zoom when you're driving. So it's more like a TomTom -tom GPS rather than just a static map. As someone who has pride in his music library, keeping it organized, clean, I gotta say the new music app in iOS 10 is very nice. It's very clean, easy to use. The only thing I don't like about it is that the controls are so big, especially if you have a smaller SE or 5S and you're using the new music application, it gets very crowded. But other than that, it's nice. It's very easy to use for sure. I like that there's album art now in the control center and the on-screen controls from your lock screen are very nice and easy to use as well. So the design is nice. The navigation is still a little bit clunky. I had a hard time figuring things out going in and out, but you can customize on the front page what you see here, which I thought was nice. So customize your music experience, how it looks. And I like that there's such bright thumbnails everywhere. Very well implemented with 3D touch, a lot of controls everywhere. It just takes a little minute to figure everything out. So take five minutes, understand it, and you guys will get it. With iOS 10, Apple opened up the API of Siri with third-party developers. That means you're gonna be able to do things like ask Siri to pick you up in a Lyft or Uber ride right now. There's a lot more you can do thanks to that third-party support. And depending on the app, of course, you're gonna be able to do different things. And that's definitely a huge plus for Siri. And rejoice, you can finally delete system stock applications. This is the number one reason to update to iOS 10, not really, but they're not actually deleted. You just temporarily hide them until you go back into the app store and download them because they're always preloaded. So what else? Little tidbits of iOS 10. Apple will now notify you with the 6S when there's moisture in the lightning connector port. They enabled a sensor that was previously disabled. There's voicemail transcription. So Siri will read you back those angry voicemails. You don't have to hear them. But anyways, guys, that's pretty much it. For the most part, those are the biggest things about iOS 10. Here's the thing. There are so many small things. I'm not able to cover them all in one video. I did cover them in separate videos, which I'll link at the end of this video. But if you're looking to find every little detail, that's not what this video is for. This video was just to showcase the biggest ones. Now, the last point I wanted to touch on was performance. How does this make your device perform? So in early early beta test comparisons to the iOS 9 current firmware, the change was pretty good. It was very minor, if at all, difference. I mean, it was slower to start up, but most of us aren't going to be turning our devices on and off all the time, so that shouldn't really make a difference. But as a whole, iOS 10 does not degrade the performance on newer devices. On the 5 and 5S, you will notice a small difference, but stability-wise, it makes up for it. It's a very, very stable 
release. To get a more specific answer of whether or not iOS 10 is faster or slower, make sure to watch the speed comparison test. I'll be releasing a full comparison on all devices between iOS 9 current firmware and the latest iOS 10 release. So stay tuned for that. Guys, thanks so much for watching. That's iOS 10 for you. Great, great release. Not huge, but significant enough to warrant updating. There's really no reason not to update. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Have a great day. Enjoy iOS 10. Peace.